Hey Fly Tires, Doug here. Today we're going to be tying up a couple of Iron Lotus and enjoying a Lazy River Pilsner by New Trail. So the Iron Lotus is a fly that I tend to find on the end of my line a lot, whether I am doing tight line nymphing techniques, suspension nymphing, or using it a really small one on a dry dropper. It's something I find in my lineup a lot. It has those really good hot spots on it, like that white rib and the red right behind the bead there yet it still maintains some of that natural look, especially whenever you tease out that dubbing and the legs there, it just has a really buggy look to it. In the spirit of the last video that we posted to our channel, uh, and I'll link that video here, we chose the Lazy River Pilsner, which I'm gonna be cracking open here in a moment. Okay, let's jump into tying the Iron Lotus. So the hook that I have in the vise here is a Lively Legs 320J in a size 14. Uh, it's just an extra wide gap jig hook and I got a 330 seconds gold tungsten bead there and some wire right behind the bead more than anything just to sit that bead into place so it's not going to be going anywhere. First things first, we'll start our thread right behind that wire there and cover up all that lead with our thread wraps. And this thread is a UTC 70 denier in olive. And we'll take our thread the whole way to the rear of the hook here, where we're going to tie in our tail. And for that, I just have some Coke de Leon in medium pardo. Now I'll take off a somewhat generous clump of tailing fibers. I like enough to know that I have a, a tail in there, but try to keep it thin enough to where I'm gonna have a good sink rate on my fly. So what I'll do is I'll lift those tail, that tail up, put my thread under to really flare that out. I think it gives it a good look whenever you have your tail like that, but that's just my personal preference. Snip, snip off the rest of our tail there. And then for our rib, we're going to use some white wire. This is a size small. And I really like the white wire because it sticks out just a little bit more than say thread would. You can use white thread. That's what the original pattern actually calls for. But I find that if you, uh, if the fly gets wet, or if you coat the body in some type of an epoxy, that it kind of blends right in. So I like the wire, just out of personal preference. I'm gonna make sure that I really cover that wire though, whenever I tie that in. And then what I'll do is I'll give just a quick whip finish here. Only reason being is because I'm gonna use the rotary function on my vise take that wire to the front here. You don't have to do that, but if you have a rotary function, you may as well use it. So I'm going to just wrap this kind of to where the thorax is going to be. I did a counter wrap on there. About two in the back, one in the front to really lock it in. And then Gonna helicopter that wire out. And then next, I'm gonna coat that body in an epoxy. I just have some solar res bone dry here. And by doing this, we're gonna make sure that that thing has a really sleek body. It's gonna sink quickly. So here it's kind of easy to overcoat that body. So what you can do is actually take off any excess with your fingers there. That looks good to me. Now we'll torch it with our light. And once that is fully cured, we can tie in our wing case. And for the wing case, I just have a black ribbon here now you can use a black thin skin. Either one's gonna be fine. I like this ribbon because I don't have to cut it in the strips. 
It has a little bit of a shine on it. And there's our thorax, or our wing case tied in. Now to dub the thorax, I use the SLF Squirrel Dub blend and just anything in like an olive or dark olive, whether it's a hare's ear, a squirrel mix, or, or whatever, any of that stuff should do. I'm tying a pretty thin dubbing noodle on here, trying to get as much guard hairs as possible, uh, just to give it more of that buggy look. Okay, I got a good thorax on there. Pull that wing case over. Capture it with our thread. And then give a few wraps in front. So that's kind of sticking straight up there. And then you can cut off your wing case. And at this point, we're done with our olive thread. So we're going to whip finish this. Cut that thread out with our scissors. And we're gonna get our hot spot thread. This is just gonna be a red thread and 70 denier. And I think a thin thread is actually important for this because as you'll see, I'm gonna try and get away with as few thread wraps as possible because I just want a really subtle hot spot on that. So I'm going to whip finish that on there for my hot spot. And that should do. And to finish, I'm going to take a little bit of head cement here, just the UV solar as again. And zap it right behind the bead just so those thread wraps are going to stay secure since I just did the, the fewest amount possible to just have the subtlest of hot spots. So after we're done we have our iron lotus and that's all there is to it. Real easy pattern to tie, pretty fun one to tie, just a, a real awesome fly here from Lance Egan. So that's the Iron Lotus. Really awesome fly, fun one to tie, and one that I have a lot of confidence in. I fish it a lot. I love certain elements of this pattern, like the white rib and that red right behind the collar there. I think red is an awesome trigger color for trout. It's one that I have a lot of confidence in, and it's one that I would encourage you that if you haven't tried, try tying a few up and giving it a whirl. So as for the beer, Going with a, uh, a beer from New Trail. New Trail is one of my favorite breweries here in Pennsylvania. They have some awesome IPAs, but I think one of the things that a lot of people are missing out on is their Pilsners. This is called the Lazy River Pilsner, and I figured this would be a good one uh, with the last video that we posted to the channel where Dan and Nick were out in Montana and floating a tailwater. And nothing better than a Pilsner for a long float trip in the afternoon fishing for trout. Being in the hot sun you, want sun, you want something a little bit more sessionable. I know with this particular beer, it's uh, about 4% and it's really crisp and kind of light, or at least compared to a lot of the beers that they have out these days. So it's a good one for being out on the water. You can have a couple of them. Overall, great beer, especially if you're tying some flies too. So that's all we got for today. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let us know what you'll think of the video series. And until next time, tie one on.